question. But in practice, people, many people think they represent the algo data. So there must be something that they are not the same. They cannot all agree each other at least perfectly. So the purpose of this study is to use this graded algo data to look at the salinity variations and try to find which results we get are robust and which are not. And if there's any discrepancy, when and where it happens. Here's the outline. We're going to start with the data. So of all the dozens we just saw, only five of them is actually updated regularly. They all have a monthly resolution, have the uh, this file are BOA and info from Meta Office, IPRC, MOA from Japan, and RG from Scripps. The, they have different mapping methods uh, that will cause some problem. We're going to talk about it later. For this comparison work, we need a, we need some common coverage for all of them. So the time period we pick is 2005 to 2015. The reason it's from 2005 is that's when the Argo program is starting to have a good coverage for making a global map. We picked 2015 for two reasons. One is we'll, when we're doing this, we were trying to compare this with uh, uh, with ECHO, uh, state estimate. And another reason is about the same time last year, the Argo team, they have an announcement. They found uh, a high bias exists in around 25% of all of their flows. Then in the both in the salinity and pressure, and they found this <coughs> in last year. But it, this bias started from September 2015. So we want to uh, get rid of that kind of noise. For the domain, we pick 60 to 60. Uh, we look, look into three layers: the sea surface, which is the average of the upper 20 meters. We get a, it's very well mixed. And another one is up to 700 meters, where the variation is strong, and 700 to 2,000, the variation is not as strong as the upper ocean. Now, for every wearable we care about, any time, anywhere, we actually can have five of them come from each of the product. So every five of them, we can have a mean, and we call that ensemble mean. And every five of them can have a standard deviation. We call that the spread. So the mean, so the ensemble mean uh, is working like a reference for us to know how different they are. And the ensemble spread is telling us as a group if the, the how large is the disagreement uh, is. And we also care about is for each of them how different they are from the reference. And we also recorded the largest one. We call it the largest deviation, but we only care about is this absolute value. So we will find out if all of them is pretty scattered, or it's just one of them is the bad apple. Now the result. So we're going to start with the sea surface. The surface. Uh, the first thing we care about is the mean state, or or we can call it the climatological mean or time mean here. So on the left. So this one is uh, uh, the timing of the ensemble mean. And it, it looks very similar to the 50-year mean we just saw in the very first slide. And then we have the high value in the subtropical, low value in the subpolar. And on this map, you can also see there's a lot of dots. So this dot represents the temporal variability. So if the dot is big, the temporal variability there is very strong. The reason we put this on it is when we're looking at the spread on the right, you may find they somehow they have some similar structure, where, uh, but they are not exactly the same. So that could tell us that if there is a variability on the time axis is strong, it may cause some sampling errors. And not all of the graded data are doing so well with that. They cannot get an agreement on how high that value is. And for some places, it uh, matches pretty good, like in the Atlantic Ocean. But some, some other places, like in the tropical, uh, tropical Pacific, you can see there's uh, some standard, uh, high standard deviation here. But you don't see that spread. See it's that strong. So for the spread itself, it has a very interesting pattern. It almost looks like something to do with the surface current, especially in the Atlantic 
equatorial and the Gulf Stream. So this high spread, this discrement must have something to do with how the sample of the water movement and energy transport probably have something to do with the eddy. And not all of them can resolve that really good. Uh, another thing you should notice here is the ratio of the spread is this. Uh, the, ra the range of the spread is here, and the range of the ensemble means this. If we do, we, we calculate the ratio, the spread is only like 5% of the ensemble mean. So it's not pretty big, <laughs> but this spread is at 0.2. It's a lot larger than the 0.01, the Argo target. So it's definitely measurable. So further we can do is use this, this difference patterns to investigate the spread so we can see where this high spread is coming from. So a lot of things happening here, but I'm only going to name a few, the major ones. Uh, what I want you to see first is the bottom right. This is the largest deviation of the, to, to the ensemble mean. So all of them, uh, most of them is yellow. Yellow means this high spread is caused by IPRC is here. So this IPRC is uh, have a very smooth pattern compared to others. Not like the RG is very scattered, not like the others, they're pretty scattered, but RG is very smooth. And it also have all of this zonal structure. Has, it looks a lot like the spread we just saw. So why is RG, uh, why is IPRC happens to th looks like this? So the documentation of IPRC is not as good written as the rest of the graded product. But from my reading, the IPRC used uh, harmonic and biharmonic operators. That's probably because it caused this smooth pattern. And why we are seeing this current related? Because when they are doing the interpolation, they didn't just do the XYZ coordinates. They use the dynamic information of the isopycnol. And that isopycnol comes from the absolute dynamic height. And absolute dynamic height comes from satellite. So you know there's some geostrophic uh, current, some geostrophic information was getting in there. That's probably because of this very interesting current pattern. So next, this is the uh, time series. It's a uh, global mean. The shades on the bottom is the spread. Uh, and is on the left axis. So the, in general, they're doing great. You don't see very high spread. They have a good consistency. And for this, this time series itself, it's not like temperature, a, which has a huge signality. But for the salinity, it don't have a huge signality. There is some, but not that, not critically high. And, but in, and another thing is, in general, you look at the area, it looks like have an uh, interannual variation. It has a bell shape, a little high in, in the two, around 2010, and a little low on the left and right. So that is probably because of the La Nina in 2010, and it hit pretty hard, and caused the sea level drops, and fresh water comes from the ocean to the continent, and therefore the sea level is going up. Uh, the, salinity is going up. Another thing about this is the spread itself. So uh, the Argo flows is getting more and more each year. So you would expect that with more flows in the ocean, we will get a better consistency. We will have, uh, we'll have more consistency on the result. But it looks like that's not the case here. The spread is pretty s stable at, the, at the, almost at the same level. Maybe it's, uh, for, R, for RG here, it's a little, a little high, but in general, they're doing pretty fine. So the mapping method is of this graded data is it's having a, some consistency on the surface level. So Selene have a zonal structure. So we think a zonal evolution pattern here would tell more story about that. So again, this is a global mean. It shows there's a decrease around 40 to 60 north, <coughs> around here, and an increase in between 20 to 40 south. And in the middle, it looks like it has something to do with Enso. And the reason is we, we put a UF on that. 
we can we, we can see that the actually the first mode it have a lot to do with the answer. Now the third mode we're gonna start from here. The third mode explains ten percent and it, it looks like a semi annual signal, and the second one explains fifteen percent. And when we compare, when we combine the time series and the, the spectral pattern. The second one is basically the, a trend, but it also have some semi-annual signal there. Well, this first one, it it's not looked that good, but it actually have a correlation with the ENSO index around 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. And remember, this is for the global mean. If we do a Pacific mean, this number will go to 0 0.7 to 0 0.75. And if we do a 2020 Pacific, it will be almost 0.8. So here for the difference, so the third mode is already semi-annual. So we put a, a seven months running mean to reduce that kind of noise. From here, we can see that they, all of them have a better agreement in the Southern Ocean. We have a lot of white color there. And another thing is, should be pointed out is the, this one, the RG. So you can see this pattern is actually the opposite to this one. This one is the mean. So they are opposite. That tells you the RG is having a weaker ENSO signal, right? Because they cancel each other. So a little summary. For the mean state, it's doing great. The spread is measurable, but it's not that big. The pattern is different on the IPRC, probably because to how they deal with the mapping. For the variability, it's also doing great. We can have a robust decrease around 40 to 60. We have an increase between 20 to 40 cells. The first mode is uh, ENSO, explains around 30%. We have better agreement in Southern Ocean. We have weaker ENSO signal on RG. Now the next layer is the upper 700 meter. So the upper 700 meter, we average that, and it also includes the sea surface. So a lot of patterns look, look similar to the ones we just saw. But there's some difference, like in the North Pacific and the South Atlantic, they don't have that kind of strong uh, high salinity anymore because they get uh, diluted by the fresh intermediate water. And the, uh, the temporal standard deviation pattern distorts is also different. So when we do the vertical average, we the current system and the shallow current and edits they are not that important. So what's left is more have more associated with the vertical transport. So you can see that the strongest standard deviation comes in the the, where the AMOX happens and all the line along the Southern Ocean. So we have something to do with overturning system. And this pattern can be translated into the spread with better consistency. So, mm, yeah, so means again, so the temporal variability will cause high spread. And we take a step further. So this is actually very interesting because you can see the three on the left have more white color. That's, and all of them only have, uh, all of them, their data is only based on Argo floats. But the two on the right, the EN4 and the MOA, they use data other than the Argo, not only for the salinity data, but also for their background field. And this. The background field for EN4 and more comes from water ocean atlas, and it's, it's longer. So this this difference have is probably related to related to the the change of the salinity level as a whole in the Argo era. And another thing is in the southern southern hemisphere is also very broad. In, especially for EN4, it's probably because historically we don't have that good salinity data there. Time series. For this layer, they're not so, also not doing bad. Uh, we don't see the bell shape anymore, but they also don't have a trend. There's uh, still have a jump in 2010, so it's 
probably still because of the La Nina. And but for the spread on the bottom, you can see that since this one is the spread have the half of the time series, so you can see relatively it's getting worse, and especially for the first year and the last year. So for the first year, it's understandable because for anything we related to modeling or the mapping, we, so the first few years, few months, it's al always lack of reference, so there may be some mistakes there. But for the last year, we don't know if this, what caused this, because this is not the last year of the Argo products. This is only the last year of the 11 year we choose. So if we, there is, a, they're updated like to the 2018. So if we go three more years, there could be some serious difference or there will be not, we, we don't know. But the suspicious thing is there's a tendency to going bad. All we know is for the algo floats, the high bias kicks in around here. So you can see maybe that's when, why it became pretty scattered. So here's a non-average anomalies. So we can further see where these variations come from. So on the left is uh, again is ensemble mean. So you can see that most of the variations happens in the top 100 meters of subsurface and subsurface ocean. We can also see it's uh, almost a uh, two-year lag for these signals to travel from the upper 100 meters to 100 and 200 meters. And for the spread, almost everywhere you see a high anomaly, there's a high spread. And again, we do the ratio. The ratio is not 5% anymore. The ratio now is 50%. So that means something is, is going wrong with this variation. And it came from EN4. So you can see here, it's almost all red. That's represented to EN4 here. So for this specific pattern, so in the our 100 meters, this pattern is actually opposite to the ensemble mean, meaning the EN4 has a smaller variance in the upper 100 meters. But for below 100 meters, it's actually the same to the ensemble mean. That means below 100 meters, EN4 is suggesting this variance is larger. There's also a variance in signal here, all the way in the 2005. That is probably have something to do with when they do the vertical interpolation. Here uh, again is the zonal mean. We have a sim very similar structure to sea level uh, because we, that's where the strongest variation happens. And a little thing here is that we get a clear decrease in between 40 to 60. So if you still remember the sea surface one, Actually, in this part, in the first year, it, this region have a, a little below average. So we think maybe when we're doing the vertical average, that kind of thing is probably related to the fresh water input from the surface, and that, that kind of thing is getting averaged out. Now, the, for the mode, the third mode is not semi anymore. It more looks like a noise and only explains 9%. And the interesting thing is, for the first two, it's actually switched its place. So for the surface, the first mode is, and so second mode is trend. But for the average result, first mode became a trend, and the second mode became a, and so. And the correlation for the second mode to the and so index is very similar to the surface. Here, now for the difference, we still have some noise, but they have a better agreement near the equator. So in the middle part, they have some white color there. And another thing to point out is for EN4 is this one. You can see there's a huge salty core around this in the Southern Ocean. And if you remember that, when we saw that before, for the non-average thing, they have, a, they have a anomaly that happens all the way to the upper 700 meters. That probably corresponds to this. So so the info have some huge anomaly in the Southern Ocean. 
A little summary here. The mean state still going strong. Info and MOA have different pattern, probably because they use different mapping method and historical data. And for the variability, it's doing well. There are some exceptions, like the MOA on the, the correlation of MOA to others on the time series is only 0.7, while the rest is over 8 and over 0.9. And the info had the pattern of info correlated to the pattern of the ensemble mean is only have 0.6, while the other is around, again, 0.9. So the spread is relatively high. It's getting to 50%. And for the zonal mean, we have a decrease at 40 to 60 north. And we have some further calculation to see that is the North Atlantic. And the first mode is not so anymore. It's a trend expense. 35%, and we can have a better agreement in the tropical regions. The next we care about is uh, 700 to 2,000 meters. Again, for the mean state, the water is generally getting fresher. The only high salinity is here in the North Indian Ocean and in the North Atlantic, where there's the Mediterranean outflow that brings the salty water from the Mediterranean Sea to the North Atlantic. So this, this water is heavy and it's salty, so that probably, and it goes downward. So that you can see that it matches the dots, matches the temporal variabilities. And, and we can still see there's some temporal variabilities around the Southern Ocean. And again, this pattern of the temporal standard deviation can be translated into the spread, we can have almost the exact same pattern there. Here shows, for the spread we just saw, it's not only about EM4 and MOA. Look at the largest deviation here, All, almost everywhere is red. That means everywhere EM4 is the largest deviation from the ensemble mean. And it getting countered, getting offset by the BOA, the red, this one, and by RG. So the reason why in four is, again, probably because of data source, but in this. So when in four is dealing with this data, they use uh, called something called a recursive filter. So they claim they don't have to get rid of any data. So they use everything they get. So apparently, not all of them have the uh, same quality. So that may probably be cause this. Uh, this bias in the Southern Ocean and maybe in the North Atlantic as well. But definitely we can do more about that to see why in is having this kind of pattern. For the time series, for this layer, the variability is generally smaller, uh, a lot smaller than the upper ocean and it's smaller than the 0.01 the Argo target, which means if uh, it may look bad, but they're not necessarily real. They are still within the uncertainty. So nevertheless, the, most of the products here shows a bell shape, uh, high on the left and right, but low in the middle. And for some reason, you can see this purple line is from NOAA, uh, from MOA. MOA is suggesting it, since 2006 to 2014, this more, this is not a bow shape, but it's more like a trend. And the spread, so the spread you can see in the Sudan fight is going rocky high. And that is only, almost only because IPRC have extremely low value and beyond here. It goes all the way around here. And there's also a tendency of increase the spread for all the way from 20, 2012 to 2015, all the way up. Uh, yeah, the only good year is, uh, you can, is around 2009 to 2011. So before that, we can see that where is all that kind of spread happens. So on the left, on the ensemble of anomaly, you can you can still see that bow shape like high in this and here, but low in the middle. So that's, you can also see here, there is a very fresh anomaly. And 
And again, like the upper 700 meters, almost everywhere you have a high or relatively high anomaly, you can have a high spread. They are very comparable. Almost, and they have very similar strengths here and here. It's actually pretty messy for the, if we trying to find out which one is contributing to that spread. So look at this map in general. The, again, the EM4 is doing pretty bad on this part and on this part. And another thing is interesting is for the fresh core, it's on the IPRC. And it also have a, a very strange annual signal competing repeatedly happens at this same depth. And we have some later uh, research to find this is somewhere in the North Atlantic Ocean. We don't know why it has this, but exactly we can see that. And for the MOA, before we just saw MOA suggest there is a trend. So there's a trend. Here for the tsunami, we don't see a lot of inter interannual variabilities anymore, so it's mostly about trends. So we have a decrease around 30 to 50 south. We have an increase between 2020. In the uh, north to 40, there's uh, kind of messy. It's maybe this uh, only place to, for this layer we can see uh, interannual variation. And again, we put a uh, UF on it. The thermal results again looks like a noise. We're going to ignore that. We have the first two. So the second one, the second mode, almost like a trend, but some of the products is they have a pretty huge different disagreement on that. And for the first mode, it's almost like a decadal variation. For at this depth, we don't know what that is. So, but it could have something to do when it was trying, maybe it was trying to compensate the uh, salinity changes at the surface. And you can see the I IPRC, again, it have a really strange time series. It don't have anything on it, not like others. For the difference, for this specific layer, BOA on the top right, is closest to the reference to the ensemble mean. So we've seen before that something is going on at 800 and 900 meters. Now we know it all happens here. All happens around 30 north. And they're all in the North Atlantic Ocean. So another thing I should talk about is uh, RG, this one. So if you compare this one is with the reference, this is a different reference, this, uh, and this one is a reference. They have opposites of the opposites of the pattern for most part of the ocean, especially for the tropical, it almost goes against it, and in the North Atlantic, it goes against it. So, for RG, if you are only working with RG using these products, you may find the variation is maybe smaller than the other people are doing when they are using other products. Summary here, the mean state is still doing good. The info have some discrepancies related to the Mediterranean outflow and the southern hemisphere, and probably because it have historical data there. For the variability, the robustness is, we can only call it mediocre because that messy time series only have a correlation around 0.6 to 0.7. For the zone, I mean, we have decrease around 30 to 50 south. We have increase between 2020. We have interannual variation, north to 40. We have the first mode is around interannual to decadal. We don't know what that is. We have uh, annual anomaly on IPRC at the North Atlantic. We have smaller variation on RG in the tropical Pacific. Now let's go to conclusions. So there is uh, something robust for all of these products. In general, the mean state is doing great. We have a high salinity in the subtropical, low in the subpolar. We have high temporal standard deviation, which can be very well translated into the high spread. For the variability, 
to see surface have a good robustness. It have a decrease around 40 to 60 north. It increased between 20 to 40 south. The first mode is also explain 30%. We have better grim in the southern ocean. For the upper 700 meters, we have a downward signal traveling around. It, ha it has a two-year lag. And we have a clearer decrease at 40 to 60. And the first mode of UF is not enzo anymore. It's a trend explains 35%. For the 700 to 2,000 meters, the robustness, we can only call it mediocre. But you know the absolute value is not that big. The decrease happens around 30 to 50 south, and increase happens between 2020. We also have interannual variation north to 40 north. The first mode looks like interannual decadal thing, but for now we don't know what that is. Here's the discrepancy part. So BOA IPRC MOA are closer to ensemble mean at sea surface up to 700 meters and 700 to 2,000 meters, respectively. And in four divots in the Atlantic Ocean and the Southern Ocean, IPRC have a smooth pattern, probably because it's all of this difference because they have different climatological fields and different mapping methods. For the variability, the surface have better agreement in the Southern Ocean, but it have a weaker insole signal on RG. For the upper 700 meters, the correlation, the MOA is doing not good on time series. In 4 is not doing good on the depth, on the non-average signal anomaly. And in this layer, better agreement is achieved in the tropical regions. For the 700 to 2,000 meters layer, we have an annual anomaly on IPRC keep happening on, at the North Atlantic. And RG again have a smaller variation in the tropical Pacific. So while many studies have adopted ensemble mean to represent the optimal scenario of the ocean in the Argo era, the real question is actually should be should we use all of these available data sets to deal with certain problems? An example is if EN4 or MOA is not included in this study, we can actually have better agreement. And on not only on time mean, on time, uh, we can also have better agreement on the temporal variabilities. And most of these discrepancies among the data sets should be attributed to different mapping methods and uh, sparse regional data. And in the end, this analysis present here provides a lower bound on, on the quality of the thing the products based on mapping methods and sampling, etc. And Beyond all we just saw, there's actually more work, but we can show that this, we have to cut that. And one of them is on the trend. So you know, difference on the variability will cause difference on the trends. This is the trend pattern. You can see that this one is RG, so it's not, it has a low, smaller trend in the tropical Pacific. And another thing is we compared Argo with Echo. You can see the right column is Echo, uh, yeah. The left column is Argo. So you can see Echo is doing pretty great on the upper 700 meters, but something is going, going wrong in between the 700 and 2,000 meters. But we can't talk about that. And right, so I want to take this opportunity to thank my major professor, Dr. Xinfu Liang, for his patience and guidance. We have countless time on rewriting and discussion. I also want to thank my committee member, Dr. Don Chambers, Dr. Rui Ponti, they have great comments and, why, and the great advice to help us to work on this on the right direction. And I also want to thank NASA for the fellowship, and last but, last but not least, thank my family and friends for their support. And that's all. Thank you. I was going to bring that up. So in general, the Argo, they have a target to reach uh, 
finally, I, I don't know if they do that for now, but eventually they have a target to reach a 0 0.01. 0 0.01? Yeah. Yes, and the fact is within this framework, we are just trying to find out if they have a good consistency or not. So we actually don't know if any of them is actually good, yeah, any of them is actually bad. So, we, so if we have good consistency, probably this, this three is doing something good. But that's not, that's, that's not actually the, what happens. I wonder if, I mean, there's been a great variation or increase in the number of hydro flows over the years. Right? So you, and you, you, I don't know how you account for that in your time series. You, you, these graphs kind of seem to show that you treat data from 15 years ago the same as you do today, or is there some, some way to correct for the gappiness in the data that you had? as you, as you change year? Well, <laughs> that's actually, I don't think that's the question I should ask this about their group. That? Yeah, I, I don't think I can answer that. That's the, some questions uh, this, all these groups should ask, <laughs> should answer. So, <coughs> of course, the number of the data they collect is going more and more every year. But for them, just, yeah, for this one, you don't see that good agreement uh, going with the number of the flows, going with the number of data. So it could be, for this, it have a good condition in the beginning where the data is not a lot. It also have a good condition at the very end where the data is already pretty enough for the analyst. Because that's <laughs> yeah, that was the other, some, some of the map kind of suggests that the, the gridding is coarser and, and some gridding is more mm -hmm. fine. And you see that in the maps, but uh, you didn't say much about that. Yeah, because I think that's a little too detailed. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they didn't have a good description on that in their documents. Could, could you go back to the... Uh, the plot of sea surface from when the team measurements over time. Yeah, so you actually can see that the blue is kind of Argo, <coughs> and it ramps up to 2005, but then it doesn't increase a whole lot after that. So I think that's one reason that you pick 2005 mm -hmm. as the starting period. You'd see much bigger differences if you looked at the early days before the Can I see your first slide or something maybe before this one? Just erase it. So what did you say the bottom slide was? Bottom is the uh, EP pattern. Evaporation precipitation. Right, Be uh, it's because when we were looking at the running, that is actually, um, right. 
So you can see most of the variance is explained by the first two modes. So for the third mode and other modes, they all, all have a very high frequency signals there. We think that it's a uh, noise or it's a semi-annual signal. So based on this, we choose a uh, seven months running mean. So we can get trying to cover that. So we can see the more general differences on the longer scale. Right, so these are semi-annuals. They have a six month uh, cycle. So that's why we use uh, seven months running mean. Yes, left is spatial. So your data is for UF has essentially transient of salinity along uh, longitude? Yeah. Latitude. Latitude. Right. You can see, right. yeah, it's this one, this pattern. Do that.